All right, today we're talking about medians and altitudes of a triangle. We've talked about perpendicular bisectors, we've talked about angle bisectors. Now we have two more special segments of triangles, medians and altitudes. A median, the median of a triangle is a segment from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. All right, so there are three medians in a triangle. It goes from the vertex of the triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. Point of concurrency, we've had a point of concurrency for the perpendicular bisector, and the angle bisector, same thing for the medians. Perp uh, the point of concurrency is called the centroid. The point of concurrency, the three medians, is the centroid. Okay? And the fourth special segment of a triangle is the altitude of a triangle. Now, anytime you hear the word altitude, you start thinking of height. Okay? The altitude of the plane, the altitude um, that you're standing at. That's the height. That's you know, how high is the plane, how high are you standing um, compared to sea level, so on and so forth. So altitude is a height. And anytime we talk about height, if you remember, we've always talked about a perpendicular distance. So altitude is always a perpendicular distance. And an altitude goes from the vertex to the opposite side or the line that contains the opposite side. Another thing I like to say instead of that last one there is, or the side extended. All right, there's some triangles where there's no way possible from that vertex you're going to be able to go in between the two vertices and, uh, you know, draw an altitude. And I'll show you an example of that later on. Okay, so it's from the vertex to the opposite side, or what I like to say, or the opposite side extended. Okay, and the point of concurrency for the altitudes is the ortho center. The point at which the line contains three altitudes is called the ortho center of the triangle. All right. All right. Medians. Again, goes from a vertex point B to the midpoint of the opposite side. Point F is the midpoint. How do we know that? Well, we have these markings here. Segment AF and segment CF are congruent, so F is the midpoint. So that is the median. BF. Segment BF is the midpoint or the median. Excuse me. Same thing. Segment CD. D is the midpoint because segment BD and AD are congruent, so that means segment CD is the median. Okay? And then lastly, AE is the median as well. Now, the medians intersect at a point that is two thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So the distance from the vertex to the centroid is two thirds the length of the whole median. That's what that means here. So the medians of triangle ABC meet at point P, that's the centroid. So the length from A to P is two-thirds the length of the whole median, AE. Same thing, the distance from B, point vertex B, to P, the centroid, is two-thirds the length of the whole median, BF. And lastly, the distance from the vertex to the centroid C to P is two-thirds length of the whole median length CD. Okay? So the medians, the lengths of the median CD, AE, and BF, they don't have any relationship together. Their relationship is within their own median. The distance from the vertex to the centroid is two-thirds length of the whole median. All right? There's no relationship between length AE, CD, and BF. There's no relationship between those three medians but they all have the same relationship from their vertex, their respective vertex to the centroid is two-thirds the length of whatever their whole median is, okay? All right, here's an example of that. Point M is the centroid. All right, so we know that point M is the centroid. Just that little statement there tells us some things. What does it tell us? It tells us that L is a midpoint, J is a midpoint, K is a midpoint. All right, because the centroid is the point of concurrency for the medians, and we know a median goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, so therefore we know those three points, J, K, and L, are midpoints. Now, what do we know? We know the distance from the vertex to the centroid is two-thirds the length of the whole median, right? So we have that equation. And now, what do we know here? Well, we know the length of GM is 6, 2 thirds the length of GL, all right? So can we find the length of GL here? 
How do we get rid of a fraction? Multiply by the reciprocal. So we multiply by 3 halves. And that's like 6 over 1. 6 divided by 2. That's 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So the length of GL is 9. Which then makes finding the length of ML and GL. All right, we found the length of GL. Length of ML. All right, the length of ML. Simply take length of GL, the whole median, minus length of GM, so 9 minus 6, the length of ML is 3. Okay? Now using the same diagram, okay, using the same diagram, suppose length MK is 7. Can we find the length of FM and the length of FK? Alright? Well, looking at this here, okay, we see this relationship. We see the length of GM is 6. So the distance from the vertex to the centroid is 6. The distance from the centroid to the midpoint is 3. It's half, right? Okay, so if the length from the centroid to the midpoint is 7, what's this length then? Okay, so length FM should be 2 times the length of MK. So length FM equals 2 times 7, so that's 14. And the length of FK is those two added together, so 21. Okay, and we could check to make sure that works. You know, the distance from the vertex to the centroid should equal 2 thirds the length of the whole median. Well, length FM we think is 14. Is that 2 thirds the length of 21? Again, that's like 21 over 1. 21 divided by 3, that's 7. 7 times 2 is 14. Does 14 equal 14? Yeah, it is. Okay, so we did it correctly. All right? All right, altitude. Again, an altitude is the perpendicular segment from a vertex to the opposite side or to the line that contains the opposite side, or like I would, like I would, like I like to say, or the opposite side extended. All right, so from the vertex, perpendicular to the opposite side, there's our altitude. Here in triangle QPR, there is no way physically possible to draw a, an altitude from point Q in between points P and R. You can't draw a perpendicular line between points P and R. So we extend the side and then we can drop the altitude, the perpendicular height, okay? The perpendicular distance. So it is inside the triangle, it can be outside the triangle as well, all right? Now, points of concurrency. Here we got the three altitudes. Altitudes from point A, perpendicular to the opposite side, F. From point C, again, there's no way to draw it in here, so it's extended to the outside. And same thing from B, there's no way to draw it inside here, so it's drawn outside. And now we have to extend those three lines. Point G is the point of concurrency, so point G is the orthocenter of triangle ABC. All right? All right, here's a quick proof using altitudes and medians, all right? We know that we're given that triangle ABC is isosceles, so that tells us some things, all right? And we know that we're talking about base AC. Now, because it's isosceles, what do we know? Well, we know that segment AB is congruent to segment CB, right? Because if a triangle is isosceles, And it has two congruent sides. Okay, and we know which two sides are congruent because they tell us which one is the base. Okay, now think about this. I'm going to stop there for a second. All right, we're trying to prove that B, segment BD is the median of triangle ABC. So if it's going to be the median, what do we know about point D? Point D has to be what? Has to be the midpoint, which means that segment AD has to be congruent to segment CD. So we want to show those two segments congruent in order to say that this segment is the median, okay? 
So that's where we have to get to. All right, and again, I have triangles. I'm tr I have things congruent. I'm trying to get things congruent. I have to get AD, segment AD, congruent segment CD. So I'm trying to prove triangles congruent here. Now, we know that segment BD is the altitude to base AC. All right, it's an altitude. That means it's a perpendicular distance. All right, so we know that angle BDA and angle B, D, C are right angles, right? If it's an altitude, then it intersects and forms a right angle. Alright, that's what we just got done talking about over here. It's a perpendicular distance, right? So we know that. And perpendicular obviously we know means forms a right angle. So the two triangles I'm looking at, there's my original position triangle, triangle BDA, and then I want one that looks like that, corresponding position. Alright, B corresponds with B, D corresponds with D, and C corresponds with A. Now, so we know we have a right triangle because we have right angles. Okay, the one triangle congruence we have for right triangles is hypotenuse leg. Okay, so let's think about that. Right now, segment AB and segment CB are, is it the hypotenuse or the leg? Well, it's across from the right angle, that's the hypotenuse. Can we get a pair of legs congruent in these two triangles? And yes, we can. All right, the two triangles in the original diagram, there's a freebie here. They're sharing this side. So segment BD is congruent to segment BD. Congruence is reflexive. Okay, so marking that, we have segment BD, congruent to segment BD. Do we have congruent triangles now? And yes, we do. So, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. Hypotenuse, leg, triangle congruence. Alright? Now, if triangles are congruent, what does that mean about all the other parts, all the other segments and or angles? It means they're congruent, right? And like we were talking about, how do we get to prove that we have a median? We needed to show those two segments congruent. Well, we have congruent triangles, so we now know that segment AD is congruent to segment CD. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And now if those two parts are congruent, what do we know about segment BD then? We know segment BD then is the median. of triangle ABC. Okay, if point is a midpoint, then the intersecting segment Is the median. Right? Okay. Any questions with that? Okay, if you do have any questions, make sure you come to class and ask your questions there. Alright? Thanks a lot. Have a great day.